The Tom Woods Show, episode 1842. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. I am delighted to be joined once again after a long absence by our old friend John Lee Dumas. I have learned so much from this guy, first because of his unbelievable program for podcasters called Podcasters Paradise. I joined that thing back in 2014. It's been a solid seven years that I've been a part of that community, and it's been tremendously helpful. There are other libertarian podcasters, you know, like Mark Clare of Lions of Liberty. He's also a member of Podcasters Paradise. There's a bunch of us in there because that is the place to go if you want to learn and master podcasting. So that was how I first got to know John. And then I found out, of course, he has his own podcast that's been extremely successful. Seven days a week, Entrepreneurs on Fire is the podcast, and he interviews a different entrepreneur every single day, seven days a week. And now he has his first traditionally published book on the verge of release, and it's called The Common Path to Uncommon Success, A Roadmap to Financial Freedom and Fulfillment. John, welcome to the show. Tom, I am fired up, brother. It's been over 1,600 episodes, but it feels like yesterday. <laughs> it's been so darn long. No, it's, it's nice every once in a while to talk to somebody for whom 1,842 episodes is, well, you know, I, I, I had done that three <laughs> years ago. But, <laughs> but all the same, I do want to say before we talk about your extremely interesting, and by the way, long overdue book. I mean, it's, it's a brilliant idea for a book, but geez, you've been interviewing entrepreneurs for years and years The idea must have been staring at you for a long time. I'll get to that in a minute. Before we do that, I owe you a public thank you. You are one of, I can count on one hand the number of people I've given testimonials to. And in fact, I don't think I've given you an official testimony. If you want one, I'll give you an unbelievable one because I joined Podcasters Paradise very early on. That's your podcasting program, really early on in this process. And I have flourished. I mean, I'm approaching episode 2000 this year. I'm doing really well with it by every metric. And I owe so much of that to the hard work you put in, learning all this stuff yourself the hard way, teaching it to the rest of us and maintaining such a vibrant community. So here is my public thank you to John Lee Dumas. Well, Tom, I received that. Thank you. And you are honestly fulfilling my dream by what you're doing. Because whenever people ask me like, John, why do you keep doing episodes? Why do you keep doing the thing? there's always just one answer for me. It's the ripple effect. It's the fact that I can help other people. I can maybe inspire or motivate or educate other people in doing what they should be doing, what they can be doing to share their voice, their message, their mission with the world. And now you're going to, and going to continue to, because you've been doing it for a long time, inspire a whole host of people who will never hear of John Lee Dumas or Podcasters Paradise or Entrepreneurs on Fire or anything I have to do. And I love that because that is like a second, third, fourth, fifth degree of separation of people that you're now inspiring who are going to go off and do the same thing to a whole new crowd of individuals and so on and so forth. So thank you for helping me make the ripple effect real. Oh, that is terrific. Well, I'm going to link to your Podcasters Paradise related stuff as well on the show notes page for those interested, tomwoods.com slash 1842. But let's dig into what you're up to these days. Now, as I say, I've listened to quite a few episodes of your show. And what's interesting about your style is that a lot of times you ask people from all these different backgrounds the same questions. And they really are the questions we want answers to. We want to know about a big failure they had and what they learned from it and so on. But after you've done this, you do a seven-day-a-week podcast. I, I do five days a week, but you do seven. And it must have been the case that after doing this year after year with all these extraordinary entrepreneurs, there must have been some common features that stood out. And I wonder if that's what made you say, you know, I keep hearing all these similarities, even though there are vast differences in the diversity of people I interview, still there are some commonalities that I think if I pulled them out could help people. And is that how you came up with the idea? You nailed it, brother. I mean, back in 2012, when I launched, I was clueless. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that I had to surround myself with the right people and the podcast would help me do that. You know, fast forward five years, you know, it's 2017. I mean, I still, like, I'm still getting my bearings. I mean, I've been running a multi-million dollar business for a number of years at that point, but, you know, there's still a lot to learn. And fast forward another four years to today, I'm entering my ninth year in this. I still have a lot to learn. And that's what I love about the world that we live in. But man, now that I've interviewed those 3,000 plus entrepreneurs, 
And now that I've really been able to vet out and share exactly what you're talking about are those commonalities, those foundational core principles that all successful entrepreneurs share without a doubt. That's when I knew it was time to write that book that you mentioned. And so it was a labor of love going back over. I'm just like, man, I spent 480 writing hours, like immersed in this. I wrote every single one of the 71,000 words that comprise this book. And it is just really a testament to the decade of being mentored by these amazing, successful entrepreneurs, learning from every single one of them. And I'm just fired up with the result. I still have a ton to learn, even though I've been doing this for a long time too. I know you and I both know Stu McLaren, who figures in there. And I'm going to be starting, I'm planning to start another membership site later this year. And even though I have two successful ones, I know he's the master, so I'm going to be learning from him. So for me, one of the key things has been humility, has been not trying to reinvent the wheel, not assuming that I already know everything, but a willingness to learn from people who are true masters. And that's been a a real help to me. That's exactly why I brought Stu into the book, because I sat down and I said, okay, there's 17 steps. There are 17 foundational principles that every single entrepreneur has on their very common path. And I mean, very common path to uncommon success. And I wanted to identify whom I thought in the past 3,000 interviews that I've done best exemplifies every one of those steps in that roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. And Stu is step 13. He is chapter 13 because man, let me tell you, you need to be able to diversify your revenue streams. Now that's not step one. That's not step step five or nine. It's step 13. It's down the roadmap. It's down the process. You've got to get your bearings first with steps one through 12. But once you get to step 13, you need to start looking at diversifying your revenue streams. And when I tried to think of the person who best exemplified that, man, Stu McLaren was the only person that I wanted to bring in for that because he has done so many great things, both in the business, but then also in the investment space, which is really fascinating to hear when he you know, contributes to that section in the book. It is a fantastic look at it. It's actually changed some of the things I'm doing going forward. Like I knew all the things that he did on the business side of things. I didn't know half the things he was doing on the investment side of things. So I'm like, that is fascinating. Stu McLaren, step 13, diversify your revenue streams. That guy is a legend. And he obviously loves what he's doing. He has an enthusiasm like yours. I've been going through his course and it's like he's coming through the screen. He's so dying to convey (laughs) the information to me. All right, let me ask you an unusual question for a book like this. Do you think everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur? 100% no. That's just a fact. And guess what? Number 37 at Facebook is a lot richer and a lot better off financially than you and I combined will ever be. And that's okay. And guess what? They're loving it. And they found their sweet spot. They found their zone of fire. And so my big thing is, listen, you're either meant to be an entrepreneur and you can't be anything else, or you're not. Both are fine. But why don't you find out now? Like, why don't you find out today? And that's what I love about this book is because I literally make a stand and I say, listen, if you read this book and you follow the 17 steps... And after three to six months of putting these steps to the test and putting in the work, you haven't started to achieve some version of uncommon success, give up. And by give up, I mean, guess what? I've given up on a ton of things in my life. And it's all been for good reasons. Like I gave up on law school. That was a great thing to give up on. I gave up on corporate finance. That was a great thing to give up on. It allowed me to keep shifting and trying new things, which eventually, of course, led to entrepreneurs on fire. And boom, I'm off to the races. And that's okay, by the way. Give up if this isn't for you after three to six months and go find something that is for you. For those people that are listening to this, I doubt that's going to be the case. I mean, people that listen to shows like this, you know, episode 1842 of the Tom Woods show, I mean, you're entrepreneurs. I mean, you're consuming the right content. You are educating yourselves. You're surrounding yourself with the right people. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of finding the right thing. It's only a matter of following this very specific 17-step revolutionary roadmap that I've created but guess what? It's not for everybody. You know, maybe a loved one of yours that's trying and they're just like, you know, they're kind of tapping in and tapping out. They're kind of floating around. Some people spend years floating around like that and they just waste time because they think, oh, well, it might happen. It could happen. No, the answer is no. Like it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. So why don't you find out this year? Because in six months, you'll know for certain whether this is for you or not. And that's an exciting thing because then you can move forward with a purpose. 
I'm curious about the the 17 step idea because when I first heard this, I thought well, that's just too many steps. That's going to be off putting. People will think it's too complicated. But then I realized, no, wait a minute, no. If I were starting from scratch, I want 17 steps rather than three. And the reason is any three step method is going to consist of three extremely generic steps that are just going to be a bunch of fluff that aren't going to do me any good. I want the specific 17-step path. Why should I not be intimidated by the number 17? Tom, I tried to make a 16 because I was like, oh, that's a nice even number and it's less. And like at the same time, I tried to make it 18 because I'm like, well, is there another step I could add that would ensure the completion of this roadmap? And the answer is no, there's 17 steps. So I would be selling myself short or selling myself long if I did anything but. And for anybody out there, listen, if you want that financial freedom, if you want that fulfillment, it's not going to come to you in a 60-minute video. It's not going to come to you in three steps. It's going to come to you in a complete 17-step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. So if that's something that you're interested in, if that's something that you want, this is for you. If you want some quick and easy three-step formula, go look elsewhere. This is hard. The common path to uncommon success, believe me, one of the commonalities is hard work. It's not a specific step in the process. I mean, that's just kind of a vague thing, hard work, but it is a commonality that all 3,000 successful entrepreneurs possess is hard work. But guess what's also hard, Tom? Being broke, living paycheck to paycheck not getting up in the morning and doing what you want to do, but doing what you have to do. That's hard. That is hard. And guess what? I'm speaking from experience because for the first 32 years of my life, that was my life and that was hard. So what did I do at 32 years old? I chose my hard and I chose to work hard on my business. And I made the right choice, of course, and everybody listening to my voice right now can make the same choice for them. It's hard either way. It really, really is. So why not choose your hard? All right, that, that's a good answer. But now, let's say I'm a typical listener who's kind of heard this kind of pitch before and is thinking, all right, I, I bet if I get this book, it's going to tell me, find my passion, find things that make money, find the overlapping area, and then just dive into that. And they're going to say, I'm not sure that my passion makes money. I'm not sure I have a passion. And moreover, it seems like there's an awful lot left out in that kind of approach. What are specific get started steps you give people? Passions don't make money. Passions are at best a hobby. And that's where most people make a mistake. They're like, oh my God, I'm following my heart. I'm following my dream. I'm following my passions. Cool, good for you. And it's great to have hobbies. We should all have hobbies if we have time for them. Luckily for me, my hobby happens to be my business. So that's kind of a cool thing. But guess what? It's not a bad thing to have a hobby. What is something that's going to work for you? It's called your zone of fire. It's called combining something that you are passionate about, yes, that you are enthusiastic about, yes, that you are fired up about, yes, but, and this is a huge but, you also have skills in, you also have value to the world in, you also have some level of expertise that you're being able to give value in that area of passion, of excitement, of enthusiasm. Those things combined in a very specific formula, by the way, and this is the the step-by-step process we take you through in chapter one, identifying your big idea, your big idea is not your passion. It's not your excitement. It's not your enthusiasm. It's a combination of those two things that I shared on that left-hand side of the passion, excitement, enthusiasm, the right-hand side of the skills, the expertise, the knowledge, the value. It's a commingling of those things to identify a big idea in the middle, a zone of fire. And that's just step one. There's obviously 16 more steps But let me tell you, step two is where people screw up every single time. And I mean, every single time. I don't even know if I've ever met somebody that hasn't at least initially screwed up on step two, but I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger, Tom. And I know what step two is because I'm staring at the table of contents right now. Talk about it. I'm not saying I don't want to talk about it. I'm just saying I don't want to keep talking and I want to... Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, Yeah, no, fair enough. Well, let me say a little something about this because it has to do with back when I was a book author. I mean, I suppose once an author, always an author, but I haven't written a book in a while. But I I wrote one book and it was called Who Killed the Constitution? And the idea of the book was to show that, look, everybody's to blame. You know, it's not like there's one bad guy. You know, we all share the blame. This group did that and that group did that. 
And my co-author and I thought, this will be great because this will appeal to the whole country. Everybody will say, you know, we all jointly share the blame for the problems we're facing. No, this didn't work at all. <laughs> this was one of my least successful books ever because it turns out that what people really want is a book that tells them that they're right and here's why you're right. <laughs> and for me to say, well, you know, we all have a little part to play. That did not work at all. But yet I was sure it would. I just felt sure of that. So, so then my next book, was on the financial crisis of 2008. And my publisher had this really partisan subtitle. And I said, no, I don't want a partisan subtitle. This book is for the whole world. Mm -hmm. And they said, in effect, didn't you learn your lesson about that with the previous? Like you have to identify who your audience is. And then once you've done that, maybe they'll give the book to their friend or whatever. You can reach the whole world the way you want to. But if you start off with the ambition of reaching the whole world, that doesn't work. You really do have to identify who your avatar is, what's your target, you know, even when, it, when the product is a book. Listen, confirmation bias is a real thing. People want their biases confirmed, period, end of story. So that was some very rare good advice by your publisher. So I'm really glad to hear they steered you in the right direction. So definitely congratulations to them. Now, what the biggest thing is here when people are thinking about, okay, hey, why do I not want to serve everybody? Why do I not want to resonate with everybody? Because when you try to resonate with everybody, and the keyword is their try, you're going to resonate with nobody. There is so much noise in the world. It's chaotic. Guess what? You're going to be like a little girl screaming into the wind. Nobody's going to hear you. Nobody's going to care because you're not saying anything meaningful. You're just trying to have these broad, vague, and you know, at the end of the day, boring pronouncements of, of resonating with everybody. Like it's all unicorns and rainbows. You need to stand for something. You need to find a way, if, if it makes sense in this specific topic, to be controversial, to be polarizing, if that makes sense. But another way of looking at that too is you've got a niche. That's step two. You identify your big idea. Guess what? A lot of people have had big ideas and they, a lot of people have had your big idea because it's a great idea. And I mean, it, it's a great idea. But guess what? Once you have that big idea, man, you can't just like a little lamb wander into that competitive landscape. You're going to get slaughtered, rightfully so, because there's entrenched competition there in that big idea. You've got to identify a niche. You have to discover, uncover, and reveal a niche that is not being served, a void in your big idea that is not being filled. When I wanted to launch a podcast in 2012, I didn't just say I'm going to launch a podcast about podcasts or about anything about, excuse me, life. I said, I'm going to launch a business podcast. That's, that's one niche down. But I'm like, there's a lot of business podcasts. I'm about to get slaughtered like the lamb that I am. Let me niche down again to an interview business podcast of entrepreneurs. Okay, wow. There's like seven other podcasts at this point doing that thing. They're all going to slaughter me because they're all better than me. What if I niche one more time? What if I do 10x the quantity of everybody else in my niche? Yeah. by niching down to the first daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. Tom, the day that I launched, Entrepreneurs on Fire was the best daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the worst daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the only daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. That's why I won. I was the only. How can you be the best where you're niching down to where your competition is so weak, you'll slaughter them or... There's no competition, so you win again either way. That's how you get initial traction, initial momentum in the marketplace. Then you can build a business around that. And then you can broaden out over time if you so choose. Or maybe you're going to make your life, your entire life and your entire business around that niche. And that can be a wonderful thing as well. So you have to remember these words because they're so true. The higher the barrier, the lower the competition. I set such a high barrier with Entrepreneurs on Fire nobody could compete with me. It was a seven day yeah. week show. Nobody was willing to compete with me. I had no competition. I had literally such a high barrier. I had zero competition, not even low competition. So what did I do, Tom? I built a moat around my business and I won for years. I had the first mover advantage and I kept it. Now is the first mover advantage enough? Absolutely not. Because most people do have the first mover advantage on certain things and they're great ideas. And guess what? They get initial success, Tom. But guess what? That initial idea is easily replicated. It's a low barrier. So the masses see your success. They jump over that low barrier and they swamp you and everybody goes down on that ship. Everybody, everybody loses, including you, because you're easily replicated. You cannot be easily replicated. You've got to have a moat. You've got to have a high barrier. That's how you win. And that is how you continue to win. 
That is awesome. I remember when I first found out that you had a seven day a week podcast and I just, all I had were questions. Does he record all the episodes <laughs> for the week in one day? Your head popped on. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, I, and then I read at one point, I don't know if you still do this, but Tuesday was your recording. Day. I mean, I followed you to the point where I even know what day of the week you were doing your episodes. Tuesday, I was just, eight interviews every Tuesday. That is amazing. Even now you still do that. Listen, if it works, what am I going to do? Fix it? Yeah, I mean, come on. That's I'm right. just rocking it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> that, that is unbelievable. And what's nice is you're covering topics that are that are sort of evergreen so they can be you can schedule many to anyway it's yeah it's just real quick on that note by the way and you know and this is my choice there's fantastic podcasts out there that are covering the news current events sports like it doesn't have to be evergreen content but it was my choice and my area of expertise to do that and i was just in a clubhouse with forbes riley one of my first ever interviews and she goes john i literally got an email last week from somebody who listened to our episode from back in 2012. I mean, think about that. Yeah. Last week, somebody just listened to myself and Forbes talk, me terribly, Forbes probably pretty awesomely, about a topic, and they got value from that. And they emailed Forbes about that, something that she did nine years ago. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's incredible. Hey, folks, just a quick break in our conversation with John to thank our sponsor, BitTrust IRA. I know that, like me, a lot of you are interested in cryptocurrency, and I know you wish you could get in a time machine and go back and buy up a lot of Bitcoin when it was dirt cheap, but the next best thing is to use Bitcoin to diversify your portfolio and add it to your retirement account. Well, how can you do that? BitTrust IRA is going to make that super easy for you. They help you seamlessly and securely add cryptocurrency to your portfolio. They store your private keys in nuclear bunkers with military-grade encryption. And BitTrust IRA has a 24-7 trading platform with no minimum investments and unlimited trades, plus a team to help guide you along the way if you have any questions. And they also offer the lowest trading fees in the industry. So go to bittrustira.com slash woods today to learn more. And for a limited time, BitTrust IRA is waiving the sign-up fee for Tom Woods Show listeners. That's a $50 value. That's bittrustira.com slash woods. B-I-T-T-R-U-S-T-I-R-A.com slash woods. Now, I, I want to ask, you know, obviously we do all 17 of these. We went really fast, but we wouldn't get any substance. I want to hone in on one, one in particular because it helped me so much and because it goes so much against my grain. And that has to do with finding a mentor. And the reason it goes against my grain is that because I was always the nerdy kid in school and I would read from the advanced books and, you know, this and that, I kind of developed this attitude that I don't need anybody's help, you know, because I'm the smarty pants kid from the school. I, I figure everything out on my own. And when I dropped that whole routine and I actually got myself, in effect, a mentor, well, suddenly I learned a lot faster because I was learning from people who'd been around forever and so on and so forth. Talk to me about that. How do you find a mentor? Listen, your mentor is somebody who is currently where you want to be. Listen to that sentence. It's all inclusive. Your mentor is somebody who is currently where you want to be. That is the key. Is Richard Branson or Mark Cuban or Tim Ferriss your perfect mentor? Probably not, because you probably don't want to run an airline or you know be the host of Shark Tank or fill in the blank. Like those people can mentor you in the areas that they are amazing at, but your perfect mentor is somebody who is currently where you want to be. So guess what? Back in 2012, I wanted to be a successful business podcast host. What did I do? I went and made a list of successful business podcast hosts. And I found one of them who would mentor me. And it was a fantastic relationship as a result because I found the right mentor, somebody who could be like, okay, I remember what it was like to be in pre-launch and the mistakes I made and the things I did right. Let me pass that information along to John. Okay, I remember what I did right when I launched and what I did wrong. Let me pass that on to John. Okay, I remember the first two months of actual the episodes being live and what that was like. I know the people to connect John to that are in his industry. That's the key. That's your mentor. And I will always have a mentor in different areas of my life that I'm focused on. What am I focused on now? Well, listen, I've been running a multi-million dollar a year business for now eight years in a row. Like I'm doing pretty well financially, but guess what? Health. I'm doing pretty well health-wise too, but I could be better like most people. So I have mentors in the health space for nutrition, for exercise, for sleep. I invest heavily in that because now that I've you know, got a great financial war chest and I live in Puerto Rico, so I get to keep all the money that I make, like now I want to actually live a long, healthy life. So like that's the phase of life that I'm moving into. So that's where now my mentorship dollars are going towards. 
that's the key. What you focus on actually improves. That's where you need to be focused on right now. So where's the part of the business or your life that needs to be improved? That's where your mentor currently exists. I want to ask you a kind of meta question about the actual launch of this book. I have noticed in the past few years a pattern whereby some ambitious authors like yourself, in tandem with the release, are saying, if you pre-order the book, I've got these bonuses for you. And you look at the bonuses and you think, these bonuses are worth you know, 50 or 100 times what it would cost me to buy the book. I mean, I don't even understand this, but I guess I'll go ahead and do it. I can think of reasons why somebody would want to do that. I mean, it builds amazing buzz for you. Maybe it builds an email list uh, and so on and on. But I'm looking at UncommonSuccessBook.com and I think you would be crazy not to get these bonuses. Can you just say a little something about, this is the first traditionally published book you've had, about this process itself? Tom, you would be crazy not to pre-order this book for all of those reasons. And that's why I made it such an absolute no-brainer because this is not a financial play for me. Back in 2012, it would have had to be if I launched a book. I, I wasn't making any money. In 2014, 2015, I probably would have had to you know, tread a little bit more carefully as I was building up my war chest. Now I'm like, this book is literally my gift. Not my gift like from my genius. I'm not saying any of that because it's not my genius. It's the 3,000 plus interviews that I've been a part of, that I've learned from. It is the 3,000 mentors with me being a mentee, learning from every single one of them that have distilled this knowledge into myself. Like that's what turned this book, The Common Path and Uncommon Success into what I believe is such a fantastic book. And I can say that without ego because it's not something that I sat down and created. It's something that I essentially dictated from the 3,000 plus interviews that I've done. So now that I'm here, I'm like, this book has to get into as many hands as possible. I am losing money, period, on every single pre-order that I get. And I'm getting thousands and thousands of pre-orders. I'm losing money on every single one, not like a dollar. I'm losing like $7.50 on every single pre-order I get. Well, I mean, just the, the journals, the physical journals, because you've written the Freedom Journal. Yeah, you're <laughs> mailing these things to people? Yes. Every single person that pre-orders in the USA gets all three journals shipped to their door. If you're outside the USA, I'm not forgetting about you. We just can't ship because of international. That's literally $45. So I'm gifting you the digital pack of all three of those journals but I'm losing money on every single pre-order because that's just one of the bonuses. There's four other amazing bonuses. And I'm doing that because I have to make it a no-brainer for every single person because I know that once they get the book, it's going to do everything. They're going to read it. It's going to impact their lives. They're going to tell a friend, 10 friends, 100 friends, or just their success. They're going to be like, um, how are you doing this? And then of course, that's how the book is going to snowball, just like how the podcast snowballed. It wasn't me back in 2012 that grew the podcast because guess what? I was a terrible interviewer. I was a really bad podcast host. But I said, I asked five questions and I stepped out of the way and I shut my mouth. And luckily my guests shared amazing value long enough for me to become a decent host. And now I'm nine years in and you know I've continued to improve over the years. But guess what? This book, it's it. Like this is the 17 step roadmap. And I want people to get this in their hands because that's how their lives are going to improve. That's how they're going to find financial freedom and fulfillment. That's how they're going to get their version of uncommon success with this 17 step roadmap. I didn't spend eight months writing two hours a day, 480 total writing hours to have this book read by a couple thousand people. This book needs to be read by as many people who want the things I just shared. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes, period, end of story. Well, I know your time's extremely limited. As we wrap up, I want to ask you a question that you ask your guests. Namely, tell us about a failure you've had and how it in some way wound up helping you. I've had so many failures and I continue to have failures and I will like for, for all time, because for me, if I'm not continuously failing on some levels, I'm not pushing the envelope. I'm not getting outside of my comfort zone and listen, all your magic is going to happen outside of your comfort zone. So I thrive in failures. I look for failures and I revel in failures. But the biggest one that actually almost stopped my entire journey before it even began was the, my first launch of Pod Platform. It was going to be a, essentially a service-based business where I was going to do everything, Tom. You were going to record the MP3, send it to me, and I was going to do everything else. Edit it, add intros and outros, upload it, host it on my own media host, like market it, get it out to the world. Honestly, it was just before it's time. Like there's some businesses that are valued in the tens of potentially hundreds of millions of dollars now that are doing 
just similar things and services to this. But back in 2012, there was just not enough demand at all, not even close. So that thing flopped immediately. And luckily, because it wasn't the right business for me in hindsight, but that was in hindsight, of course. So that huge failure made me start asking the right question, which is, Fire Nation, my audience, what's your biggest struggle right now? And actually not assuming what their biggest struggle was, but hearing it from their lips. Because nobody actually told me that that specifically was their struggle. I just assumed it was. And then when I actually got the real answer, it turned into Podcasters Paradise, which now has over 7,000 members, now has over $6.5 million in total revenue since 2013, and is still the biggest and best podcasting community in the world, all from that failure. That's unbelievable. So we should not, I know it sounds stupid almost and, and like a cliche, you shouldn't fear failure, but honestly... In fact, in, in my case, it's really when I've frankly been up against a wall that I've been my most creative. I've really got to think of a way out of this. What what should I do? And that's frankly when the best ideas I've ever had have been have been fired up. Well, the book is The Common Path to Uncommon Success, A Roadmap to Financial Freedom and Fulfillment. You should check out the site because you'll be able to get the bonuses. Uncommonsuccessbook.com. John, when does the book release officially? March 23rd, but all of those amazing bonuses that we talked about disappear that day because I can only send out so many journals. So make sure you get all five bonuses that disappear on March 23rd by pre-ordering at UncommonSuccessBook.com. If you just head over to that website, by the way, you'll see a video from me detailing more information about the book. You'll see the personal endorsements from Seth Godin, from Gary Vaynerchuk, Neil Patel, Dory Clark, Erica Mandy. The first chapter of the book's there. All the bonuses detailed and listed out are there. UncommonSuccessBook.com. All right, John, I'll also link to that site on the show notes page. Thanks so much for your time and best of luck with it. Tom, you're the man. Thank you, brother. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today. My California event is sold out, but I hope to see you later this year in October for the 2000th episode of The Tom Woods Show, recorded live as part of a big extravaganza with many of your favorites and with lots of fun and hilarity. So save the date, October 16th, Orlando, Florida, at the Rosen Shingle Creek, a beautiful four-diamond property. We are going to take over the place and have an unbelievable time. So save the date. I'll have a registration page soon. Does not cost you anything to attend, but I am going to have a registration page, again, to assist me in planning. So I will announce that very soon. That's being designed this very minute. So I'll let you know as soon as that's up. I'm very excited about this. It's going to be the event of the year. And given that there isn't a Contra Cruise, in 2021, well, what else are you going to do for your Libertarian event of the year? The Tom Woods Show 2000. So save October 16th, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Become a smarter Libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.